So I'm going to be using this bowl in this video and it's going to be about explaining what wheel offset is, track and the effect of offset and track on different tyre widths. So let's talk about width and offset, starting with width in some common dimensions. First one is the width of a car, and that is measured at the widest part of the body, which is typically the wheel arches. But you're saying, well, hang on, what about the wing mirrors? Well, there's another width called width including mirrors, and that's obviously going to be wider than the width of the body. Now the track is something different and that is, you can think of it as the distance between the centre line of each tyre and that's the measurement there. So those are your three differences, track, width and width of mirrors. Okay, now technically you've got your axle track which is the width between the two um, hub flanges, you've got the wheel track which is the distance between the centre line of the two wheels or the tyres because the tyres are centre lined on the wheels and it's also known as track width but generally you will see it written simply as track. Now most four wheel drives actually have, and many cars for that matter, have a different track front and rear and most famously the LC70 has a 95 millimeter track difference and here's a one that I photographed. Um, you can see that the back wheel has a distinctly different path through the sand compared to the front wheel and that's 48 millimeters difference and that's pretty obvious when you look at the car but in most four wheel drives it's often five to ten millimeters you don't even even, even notice it. The reason for that, there's a bunch of different reasons around car dynamics which um, we won't go into here but it's, um, it's not unusual. Now if you've got a dual axle vehicle the track is the width between the grouping of the wheels or tyres as I've demonstrated here but we don't really do that in four wheel drives. You certainly don't want to run dual um, wheels on an axle in four wheel driving because debris gets caught in the middle and it's much extra um, rolling resistance going through soft terrain. Okay, now let's talk about offset. Now we've got three identical axles here and important to note that they're all lined up at this point. I'm going to put a wheel on it here. Now this wheel is exactly centred, so it mounts to the axle or the hub um, exactly on the centre line. And I'm going to put a tyre around it just so you can visualise it. Now that's what we call a zero offset, when the mount point of the wheel is exactly centred halfway through the width of the wheel. Now when we move the mount point out towards the street or the outside, we call that a positive offset. And then we move it Inwards, we call that a negative offset. So there's the difference between your positive and your negative offsets there. And notice that the wheel is centered here, it's moved inboard here and outboard there. Now the amount of the offset is this distance here. So there's your center line and there's where it's actually mounted and the same here, here's the center line, there's where it's mounted and that distance there and there is the amount of offset which we measure in millimeters. So for example we might have a 55 millimeter offset positive which is what we have on the Ford Ranger. Now that might be written as plus 55 millimeters or it might be written as 55p for positive and you might also see ET55 and that's a German word which is this, I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it but it basically means insertion depth so plus 55, 55p, ET55 it's all the same thing. Here's another visualization of it. So here's two wheels on an axle and then we put, sorry, two tires, we put the wheels on it and then that is the track there and that's where the mount point is. Now if we just make the tires wider, you can see that the track doesn't actually change. So changing the tire width has no effect on track, but it does have an effect on the tire width because you get the same amount of width going this way as that way. So if you want to know where to find the offset information on your wheels, well it will actually be stamped on the wheel on the inside, so you'll need to pull the wheel off to take a look. Now what you're looking for is typically the wheel size, which would be something like 17 by 7 or 20 by 8 or thereabouts, and that will probably have the offset information stamped close next to it. So this is a Ford Ranger wheel, and we've got 20 by 8.5 and plus 55, so there's the offset 55 millimetres positive. This is a Toyota 86 wheel and it says 17 by 7 
and 48, so they haven't put the plus there or the ET, but we know that's 48 millimeters uh, positive offset. And caravans and trailers often have zero offset wheels, such as this one. All right, and so a couple of examples. Here's our car. Track is halfway between the tires, center line of the tires. We fit wider tires only, the center line does not change, no effect on the track, um, but the same amount of tire is sort of expanded that way as that way, leaving the center line the same. Then we're gonna take that same car, we're going to fit those wider tires, but also we're going to change the offset and to a less positive offset and that has the effect of widening the track as you can see there. So another example, here's our car. It's got tires on it of 265 millimeter section width and the rims on them are 55 mil, which is the standard for the range of 55 millimeter positive offset. What we're gonna do is change it to a 285 tire, so that's a wider tire, and I'm just exaggerating the width here, but you can see that again, the track has not changed with that. Um, and what that means is that that tire is 20 millimeters wider than the 265, so that's 10 millimeters that way and 10 millimeters that way. So the tire is 10 millimeters wider now. That's probably still not the widest part of the car because typically you can go about 10 mil and you won't exceed the, the bodywork width there. All right, so then we're gonna change the rims to a new offset of 33 from 55, and that's going to push those wheels out. Now, um, what that will mean is that we've got a change of 22 millimeters in the offset, which is 55 minus 33, and because we're doing that on both sides, we multiply that by two, and our track has increased by 44 millimeters. So the result is, the edge of the tire has moved out by 32 millimeters, which is the 22 millimeters um, of track either side, plus the 10 millimeters of tire width, and the track increase is 44 millimeters. Now, because the tires are sticking out, we need to fix that, unlike um, this Hilux driver who hasn't done that, we need to fit some flares um, like this patrol driver has done. So we just fit some flares to the car, and that means that the widest part of the car is now the body work and the flares count as the bodywork as opposed to the tyre. It's not legal to drive around a car, at least in Australia, where the tyres are the widest part of the vehicle. So imagine that this bowl is a wheel and here's our axle. I'm going to put the wheel on the end of the axle, that's fine, and we're going to fit a tyre to it which is represented, I'm great at craft by the way, this bit of black card there. Okay, so that's our tyre and the wheel. You can see that the tyre is a certain distance um, out from the edge of the axle here and the tyre is also centred over the mounting point of the wheel. Now if we take a thicker tyre, so that's a thicker tyre relative to this one, again the tyre is centred over the wheel and it is wider, but it's wider in that direction as well as in that direction. So the center point hasn't changed because the wheel center point hasn't changed. That means that the track is the same whether you've got a thin tire or a wide tire. So why do vehicles such as four-wheel drives and sports cars which fit wider tires end up having a greater track? And the answer is because you increase the offset. So again, here's our wheel. That's where we're going to mount the tyre. We're going to increase the offset like that. And we've got a greater distance from the hub to the out, uh, where the tyre is mounted. And therefore, we've got a greater track. So if I was to put this back on, there's our tyre. The tyre has now moved further out than what it had before and the track has changed. So now we've got our wheel and our wider tyre on it. It's still mounted in the same point which is here, still centralised at, at its uh, mounting point but you can see because I've increased the offset that tyre has now moved outboard of the vehicle and there's now space for the wheel to be able to turn for example and flex up and down etc. So that's why you fit wider offset wheels. You have heard of a spacer and that's just something which fits between the hub and the wheel and pushes the wheel further out like that. Not legal, not recommended. Okay, so you want to know about the legal limits for track. Well, the first thing is with anything like vehicle standards, you've got to refer to the current regulations in your state 
at the time when you're doing the modification. But generally what you'll find is they come back to VSB 14 here, which is the National Code of Practice for Light Vehicle Construction. Now that's split into a number of sections and the particular one we're interested in today is suspension and steering, which is of course where you will find wheels. So let's take a look at that. Now if we jump down to section 428, we find out for passenger cars, the widest wheel must not be more than 30% wider than the manufacturer's widest optional tyre. This is related, not, it's not tracked, but it's related to its useful information. And there's an example just in case um, you need some assistance with the, with the mathematics. And then we've got a table here, we'll skip that. Now we come to passenger wheel track. So this is useful. It says must not be increased by more than 25 millimeters for that particular model. And that means the rim offset must not be changed by more than 12.5 millimeters. And by change, that should really say increased because it's saying that you have no reduction in wheel track without approval of the relevant registration authority. Now you're wondering what is a passenger car? We're gonna come on to that in a moment. And then we come down here to off-road passenger vehicles, uh, off-road passenger and goods vehicles. So they, the tyres on those must not be more than 50% wider than the widest optional tyre. And there's examples there. And then we come to wheel track um, for off-road vehicles and goods vehicles. And these, and now we come to the definition. So an off-road passenger vehicle is MC, NA is a light good vehicle and so on. So each type of vehicle is classified by the authorities and that's how you know which bit of the regulations apply to which one. Anyway, the, cat the track must not be increased by more than 50 millimeters beyond the maximum specified. So there you go. There's your track and that means no more than 25 mil offset because 225s give you the 50 mil as per that example above. And it does say if a solid axle from another manufacturer is used, um, then you can increase that um, 50 millimeters beyond the, uh, the, the previous. And this it's saying special note here, this does not apply to passenger vehicles, which are four wheel drive or all wheel drive and certified as MA. And if you remember a while back, I led a journalism campaign about trying to get Ford successfully in the end to change the Everest from M, M, uh, A to MC, precisely because it could then be compliant with this sort of modification, which is common for four wheel drives. So if you're ever wondering about any form of road regulation, is it legal, is it not? Stop listening to Old Mate 58 on Facebook and just look it up and you will find the answer written down for you. The World Wide Web is a wonderful thing. All right, so to summarize then, the track, you can think of that as the width between two tire center lines and you've got the width versus your width with mirrors and increasing tire width alone doesn't increase track, but it might increase the width of the car if the tires stick out, in which case you'll need flares and then um, the car becomes wider again. And changing wheel offset will change the track. Normally you'd increase the track so you've got extra clearance for your wider wheels. There's not many people go from a stock wheel to a narrow, narrower wheel. So I hope you found this video useful. Any questions, drop them in the comments and thanks for watching.